Hey, Bob Nagy, AB5N, back with another radio review. Now, don't blame me if after watching this review, your wallet gets a little thinner. Because what I've got today, if you haven't seen it before, is really an amazing piece of gear. You're going to be very surprised. It is the FX4CR Ultra Miniature HF Plus 6 QRP, but not quite QRP radio. And if you haven't seen it, wow, this is, this is pretty much a shocker. So, as much as I don't like supporting uh, China taking over the world, when a piece of gear is made by an individual in China and we're directly, you know, going right to them, I feel a little bit better about it. This is you. Uh, I think it's, ca it's called BG2FX. There's, that's the FX. Uh, YU is his name, and uh, he's really responsive, and this has been a really uh, positive positive adventure so far dealing with you and with the community and this radio. So it is a SDR, SDR-based. You'll, you'll see it's a resemblance to a lot of the uh, SDR radios of today. It's a lot like a lot of the $1,000, $1,300 HF SDR radios. It's just this big, and it's not really QRP at 5 watts. It's 20 watts, and usually exceeds that power level output. And that's a 6 dB pop from 5 watts, so that with a good resonant wire and 10 up in a tree, and you actually can be heard instead of, you know, just not really heard that much at 5 watts. So, And, of course, I always suggest using resonant antennas rather than tuned antennas. At the lower power levels, it just seems to me that the transmit efficiency is better with a, an actual resonant antenna. I happen to use folded dipoles. So, let's take a look at this marvel of engineering. First, check out this handy-dandy case it comes in. It's sort of like a Pelican case, but a lot lighter duty. Everything fits in there real swell. And even if you add heat sinks on the top or the uh, cooling handles that now you sells for this, you can modify the box for the rig to fit in there. So let's take a look at the radio's form factor and layout. It's made of really thick aluminum and has a really hefty feel to it. It's got a little bit of weight. I've added heat sinks on the top to dissipate heat when used in high duty cycle applications like digital. There are several pathways to dissipating the extra heat, including uh, handles with that nice little blower that the manufacturer U has made for these as an accessory. On the front, of course, you can see what's on there, all your selection buttons, your tuning, and your AF. Both of these push in. I'm going to show you those functions shortly. But on the left side, we've got the phone's output and speaker output as separates. You know, these are different Z outputs, so they're, they're provided as separates here. Standard microphone input over there, BNC antenna connector, other side. We have the USB connection, and it is provided, the cable is provided for uh, updating the firmware and, and also remote operation. The CW key input is over here, and PTT out. Uh, this is for keying external devices, amplifiers and such, but it does require a buffer uh, transistor on the way out. We've got a RC kind of uh, power connector here, like radio controlled. I think it's an XT or XP60, XT60 connector, really high current. And if you need to, you can make an adapter going to Anderson Power Pole or anything else. Uh, as I'm going to show you, I've attached little pop-out legs to the back over here. Uh, that are from cell phones and they just double sticky tape glue on the back, but it's nice because when you pop them out uh, It holds the radio up just at the right angle for operation So that's about it as far as IO and such and even if uh, you attach these top fins on here uh, It did fit into the box that it came in. I Like the blue it comes in three colors by the way All right, so Let's take a look at what all the buttons do over here. Let's turn down the volume. Uh, really quickly, an overview is, uh, our power button is right here. We hold it down to turn the radio on. But if we push it momentarily, we get the power level on the transmitter. and We get to adjust that quite easily there. And these automatically turn off. IF and attenuation over here. If you press it, you get your two different attenuation levels. And if you hold it in, you get your RF gain. It's called MGC, but you adjust it here, and it operates as a traditional RF gain. The menu button's over here. If you hold it in, you get your menu selections, and you increment through them like this and adjust their values over here. But if you boot up the radio holding down the menu button, it goes into the development menu and gives you a whole bunch of other selections, which I guess I'm going to show you a little bit later. Now again, hold that down and it goes away. Filters over here are the receive filters. 
They are different from for sideband and for CW here. Uh, for sideband, you've got 3 kilohertz all the way down to 1.5 kilohertz right over here. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory as far as just incrementing through them, and you can absolutely hear the difference in them. Um, if you uh, hold it down, you do get a readout of uh, the IQ balance over here. It's for calibrating the radio, and that's in the, in the development menu. You won't be messing with that much, so you really don't need to be seeing that. Uh, this is the function key, but if you momentarily press it, you get the band changing here, and you just change your band like this, and press the button again, and you're on that band. Uh, of course, um, it has other functions if you press function and then, and then other buttons. Um, over here, your SSB selection is pretty self-explanatory, upper sideband. Uh, if you hold it in, though, it turns on the noise reduction. Really small, you can see it over there. And on this, memory or VFO, this, of course, goes between memories and uh, VFO. Memories are not implemented yet as of this firmware, but if you hold it in, it turns on the noise blanker. <laughs> and you see the little indicator come on over there. A and B VFO is pretty self-explanatory. Probably got a radio that has that right now. Uh, no big whoop. And if you hold it in, it does um, change this TR indication up the top left over here, transmit and receive. Uh, can't remember what that is right at the moment. Uh, but, oh yeah, and also you will see uh, digital up here on the top of the display. If you do hook up a computer to this and it's talking to the sound cards and you're in sideband, it goes into digital mode, mutes the speaker, and you will see the digi up there. Uh, CW button is absolutely self-explanatory. Um, if you hold in the SSB button while you're in CW mode, it switches between upper and lower. In other words, CW and CW reverse, and it changes that up, up on the top side up there. AM and FM modes here, pretty self-explanatory. Um, and if you hold down the AM, FM button, it goes into general coverage receive, and you'll see RX up on the top left. RIT, that's pretty self-explanatory too. It lights up red over here, and then you can see what your offset is when you turn this knob here and hit it again and you're you're out of RIT. Oh, you just hit it momentarily, correct. So that's really how simple this is to operate over here. These both do have a uh, detent push in position. So if you turn the AF gain uh, and you push it in momentarily, you get the microphone gain and you get to adjust that 50 seems to be about the right thing. On the tuning knob, if you hold it in and turn it, it changes the tuning increment up here. So that's also pretty self-explanatory. Some of them, some of the radios, you just press the button in and it changes this one. You have to press it in and turn it. Go over to CW mode here. That was in sideband mode. So retune them in. And we start hitting our filters. 800 hertz. 50 hertz. Let's see if we can do 50. There we go. It's usable. 100 hertz. 200. And let's go to 300. 500. And 800 is the widest you're going to get on the uh, CW mode. It's also reversible as far as the upper or lower side on CW, or what they call CW reverse. Five kilohertz. One point eight. I don't know when I'm going to be back. Two point one. Uh, on the road, probably two point four. But uh, anyway, uh, just uh, two point seven. Say hello to you and hi to 
everybody there for sure. And, 3.0. And the ver Bible verse is John 3.16. And uh, thank you very much for being there. I appreciate that. And guess what? Not only do you have lots of receive filters to choose from, in the menu you have a TX bandwidth filter over here, and you can choose what TX bandwidth you want to transmit at. I'm not sure the exact range is, but it goes definitely out to 3 kilohertz. There's a lot of subtlety here that you might, you know, overlook and isn't dealt with in some radios. Like when we change the tuning rate, right now I'm in 10 hertz. When I go ahead and change it to 100 hertz, it automatically rolls that next digit to the right to zero, which is what you want. So roll it up to 1 kilohertz. Oh, the others are rolled to zero, which is exactly what you want to happen. So now, if you hold in the menu button and turn the power on at the same time, you get into what's called the development mode or development menu. And it's got a, a menu with a whole bunch of stuff on it that isn't on the main menu, including like adjusting the TX, uh, TCXO master oscillator, uh, ALC in the, in the mic situation here, you know, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here and, and a lot of the guys on the forum will talk about, you know, what you can do here. There's also, because this is an SDR, uh, phase adjustments here that can be optimized. They are optimized at the factory, you probably won't have to touch these, but, you know, you can get into it if you want to here. The first microphone that this was shipped with was this mic over here. I believe that you may have improved the microphone and is shipping a different microphone with it now. A lot of us have been experimenting with replacing the element. And amazingly, the internal microphone on the unit is actually superior to the original stock microphone. So let's sum it up and see how this radio ranks. On the pro side, the receiver sensitivity is great and the selectivity is adequate for standard operation. Not at the top of the pile, but absolutely adequate. The form factor, super compact. There's nothing else like it out there. Wow, very impressive. It has very clean transmit audio and the signal complies with FCC specs to my knowledge. It has an awesome feature set. Bluetooth built in, sound cards built in, a lot of stuff that you expect on bigger radios. And it's a decent value. It's not super discount Chinese price, but it's certainly super competitive with, with what else is out there. The fellow who makes this, uh, BG2FX, uh, Yu is his name, is super supportive and responsive. He's using the Google Translator, but it has not been a problem. So we're able to give him input. He updates the firmware, and we have a really good interactive relationship. And the forums around this radio are very active. So you can always pose questions or put out desires and things like that and get a lot of input from folks if you're having problems or whatever. Now on the negative side, and there are negatives, the noise blanker and the memories are not implemented as of the 1.5 firmware. Uh, noise blankers generally aren't very good anyway. The noise reduction is implemented, and a lot of us are saying we don't need memories. As well, we don't want to tax the uh, processor in there any more than it already is. And it doesn't talk to PCs well yet over the USB connection. Now, people are working on this, use working on this. Some progress has been made. I don't have the latest data, but it's getting better. We users on this radio are beta testers, so when you get this radio, you know, you have to interact with the forum and, and the maker and try to make it better. So it, it's a new cutting-edge item. And it can overheat if you're on digital modes running higher power. So you has made nice handles for the side with a blower on it for heat sinking, or you can add your own. And the other thing is it's shipped from China. So really, you're going to have to wait for it. And don't buy the ones that are clones off of uh, eBay and the other sites. Buy directly from you. So there you have it, the FX4CR from BG2FXU over in China. Uh, there is no competition for this radio in this price class, in this size, and power level out there. There's just nothing that really is like it. So, um, and in its current state of firmware development, because you know these things move along and there's an interaction between the users, it is completely usable. Uh, as I showed you, there's a couple things that are not quite implemented, but really it's completely usable. I bought one of these and I have no problem suggesting this radio for other people at its current stage. We're no longer at the early stages here. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Take care. See you next time.